Chapter 33 The Millennium Bug Koa Tran, Jed and Lily's dad, finally came home from Sydney in the middle of July. He'd been away for months, working for a big company that was worried about Y2K, or the Millennium Bug. People on the news said that all the computers in the world had problems reading four-digit years that didn't start with a one and would fail when the year switched from 1999 to 2000. They were predicting dramatic stuff like planes falling out of the sky on New Year's Day. This company in Sydney was worried that they'd lose all their money, so they'd hired Jed's dad's computer business to come in and Y2K proof their operating systems, which had taken months. Well, for one thing, it means I've got some computers to offload now, Co said to Luca over dinner one night. V had taken pity again and invited us over. Oh yeah, Pop swallowed delicious pork V had prepared. How many are we talking? Co leant back in his chair and smiled so big his cheeks went round. Ten of them. This firm wanted all new everything, so they threw out perfectly good tech, for fear it might have been corrupted by the bug. Koa rolled his eyes like he couldn't believe it. So I said if they really didn't want them, I'd be happy to take them and cover shipping costs to bring them down here. They arrived this week. V dished out more pork on everyone's plate, then waved her fork in Koa's direction. Oi, just tell him already. Koa finally spread his hands wide and said, I thought the Haven could take them, yeah? I can come by and set them up so people can, those people can get online. Then it was Luca's turn to sit back in his chair. Koa, that would be amazing. All I ever ask for is access to computers so they can search for their families back home. The ones at the library get booked out so quickly and the queues for them are ridiculous. Luca shook his head. The internet cafe eats up their allowance in no time too. Setting up a free computer bank for them to use would be a godsend. Koa nodded. This is what I thought. This is what I thought, V said. Cole waved at her. Yes, yes, it was my lovely wife's idea first. Jed, Sam and I smiled at that. And even Lily only faked it when she pretended to gag at her parents kissing. When the haven is finished with them, we can donate them to the kids, school and the library, Cole said, once he and V had pulled apart. Luca nodded. I'll have to talk to the Red Cross people, see if we can get this thing set up before the week is out. He took a sip from the wine V had poured for him. I'm warning you though, Co. I don't know what the wiring at this place is like. If you try plugging in 10 computers, it could well blow the fuse box. Co waved him away. I'll come in. I'll set it up. Will you need help, Boo? Jed put his fork down and sat up straighter. Co looked closely at his son, deep in thought. Eventually he nodded once, then glanced at Luca. He's good with the setting up. He clapped a hand on Jed's shoulder. Can I bring him along, do you think? As soon as he'd said that, Sam and I were opening our mouths to plead to come too. V and Lily rolled their eyes in the exact same way and Luca waved his hands to quieten us. Maybe, let me think. He looked between us and I hoped Sam was making an effort to pull the same pleading face I was. Luca sighed. I'll have to get permission. If they say yes, we can come? Luca nodded. 